Hey guys, all right. Getting back into the bore brushes. This is Sterling's bore, pretty inexpensive, especially when I got this one as a seconds, factory seconds, because I think there was a stenciling issue or something, but I don't care. And um, uh, it may have been a shedder, but to tell you the truth, it hasn't really shed very much for me. And so maybe it didn't quite meet there at Sterling. They check them, maybe it didn't meet their uh, definition at the moment, but it's working great for me. Uh, at least in terms of shedding, it is a stiff brush. It is uh, not really soft. It's very scrubby. It um, it does. Uh, it's a nice thick, lots of bristles, uh, bore brush, uh, but it's been very reluctant to get um, uh, soft tips and to relax like bores are prone to do during their break-in period. So it looks like with this brush, uh, at least for me, the break-in period is kind of long. And I am usually soaking it about uh, an hour, 20 minutes, sometimes a few hours in this case, uh, before each shave as a mild break-in accelerator. All right, let's look at the other gear we have. The razor today is going to be this. Looks like a tech handle, doesn't it? But if, you, if your proportion uh, eye is working, you'll notice it's a little thinner than usual, and that is true. It's the thin tech handle, and you'll also notice that uh, vintage Gillette techs don't come with open comb. They don't come with these teeth. And also, if you look and you see this uh, platform, this raised flat area here that goes all the way across the razor, and, uh, and it's, a, it's a flat bottom here. It's called the Flat Bottom New. The Gillette New is a uh, group of razors and, uh, and they have uh, open comb. Normally down here a new will have just a, a half round uh, ridge going down the center but this has the flat bottom. It's a little more rare, well a lot more rare than the, the round ones because that's kind of the one that was produced in such vast quantities. Uh, they are a little on the, uh, I find them, the new, to be a little on the aggressive side, uh, but not too bad. When I was early on in shaving, they were too aggressive for me. Now they're maybe just a little bit more aggressive than, than mid-range, is, is my kind of evaluation. Other people might say that they're mild, who knows. This one comes with this flat handle tech variation and I meant to bring my other one because I have another flat bottom it's called the raised flat bottom or RFB it is a Gillette new RFB and new usually is written in all caps just for you guys who care about the um, uh, kind of the historical razors uh, because it came after the old type and the old type was another open comb razor but it was just a, a little, this was a, just a different, different geometry. And uh, it's got these great four posts on the corners. And then this ra these rails right here to keep the blade aligned really well. We'll do a razor tour at the end. But one thing I wanted you to see was the base plate there. You've got the Gillette logo on one side, the diamond there. And then you've got Made in England on the other side. And uh, and so this, I, I really like the UK Gillettes. So often they are such uh, a wonderful balance of comfort and nice close cutting. Really is a, a, a good thing. I have, I obtained another uh, RFB uh, several months ago, but the format was different. It had a long post here, uh, maybe, you know, an inch and a half long. And then it, it was in three pieces, but you see the handle was in one piece. And then there was a knob that went into the bottom of the handle that reached up and would screw into the long post here. And then this, the base plate here was permanently affixed to the hollow handle part. And I, I purchased this one because I like the RFB uh, idea. I like the RFB shave. But with this one, 
this now this head now can be used with so many other handles and I am going to put on a new handle I just got in this is one from Windrose and you can find them on Etsy if you're interested it's heavy stainless steel and it's got the same threading as Gillette and so it will fit the uh, Parkers and the like the Maggard uh, V3 heads, um, all the uh, uh, the Mercours and all that. Uh, it'll fit all that all that threading. And uh, this is my first time using this handle. Feels pretty good. Feels pretty secure. It does have the diagonals, but then it's got these verticals as well. Uh, and so I think that's going to help and keep me from keep it from slipping around and corkscrewing in my hand. So let's try this guy out. So I showed you the brush. Let us put inside of that razor a Persona Platinum. Persona Platinum Chrome. And it hasn't been used very many times at all. Personas do have a tricky system where there are some, um, there are a few different names sometimes for the exact same blade. It can be a little mystifying even after you've done some research because I think there is some kind of bad information out there. All right, so we'll just lay that guy in. I like to hold them by the sides like that. Now, as always with these three pieces, you can still get your, the, this hand over here, you can still get pinched if you hold it for too long. Like right now it's hand tight. Now I release and then I don't tighten down, you know, right away. Uh, we're good. Alignment looks uh, perfect. Okay, now the soap for today. Glastonbury. As you can see, it's inspired. We got a UK flag on there. And it's inspired by the music festival in the UK. Uh, the description was uh, Jimi Hendrix. And, uh, and so I had to look that up because I knew that wasn't Woodstock. Woodstock was in America. Um, and I, I'm not exactly sure because they don't mention the exact festival on the, on the website. Uh, it could be the Isle of Wight Festival in 1970. Uh, that may be what they're talking about because um, uh, they mentioned Jimi Hendrix. And so Glastonbury. Uh, you know, maybe I should have looked for Glastonbury Music Festival. You know, that may have uh, told me. Uh, the quickest answer. Uh, so if you know, post it online there in the comments and uh, educate me a little bit because I, uh, I'm not that educated in UK hippie music festivals in the 70s and I'm assuming this one was in the 70s. The, the notes for this are patchouli, lavender, oak moss, lichen, frankincense, and vetiver. And uh, obviously a, a Woodstock type, a 70s type music festival, weed is all over the place. And that's what they're kind of chasing with the patchouli. Now, why do I have this guy? Uh, I do like patchouli. I do like vetiver. I like lichen. I have that in a tundra artica from uh, Saponificio Veracino. It's an Italian soap that's got uh, sandalwood and lichen, and it is awesome. Uh, but the reason I have it, is because this is another scent that Sterling has made in their mutton tallow base. I've recently fallen in love with that base. It is tremendous. And so, uh, and so I bought a sample. This is what Sterling's samples look like. If you buy a refill puck from Sterling, it will be this size when viewed from this direction. It'll just be thicker. And you'll get, I think their, their uh, refill pucks are four ounces and it is soft. And so you can just press that into whatever container you want. No melting necessary at all. And so this is a very, very generous puck. I've often, often mentioned Sterling's awesome sample program, but this, it's very common for people to get a month's worth of shave, shaves out of one Sterling uh, sample puck here. And so I'm going to take my quarter teaspoon measure. I opened one of the ends here and so I will hook out about a quarter teaspoon. There we go. We'll see how it smells as we get it into lather form. 
it's not super strong right now in dry form. I do pick up that patchouli. It's definitely forward um, of that. I'm not a weed smoker yet. I, I think it'd be interesting to try it sometime. Um, and so if it becomes legal, I'll probably try it. Probably won't become a you know frequent user, but be fun to try. It doesn't I grew up in the in the 70s and 80s and the schools of course with the just say no program were saying that the weed was this uh, gateway drug and it, it I think maybe it, it actually isn't um, but I could be wrong but uh, all right there we go and so we have spread around that quarter teaspoon sample and then I have hard water here as usual they don't they didn't make too many soaps in the mutton tallow uh, apparently it was a little harder to do there's also uh, more of a so more of a, a, a funk to the base and so only certain scents uh, apparently would work well with that the, uh, they make electric sheep, which is very citronella, um, and they make sheep, which is kind of unscented. They make, um, there's another sheep one, Scott's Pine Sheep, and I like that one a lot. Uh, I got a sample of that one. And then those are kind of the distinctive sheep ones. Then they also have Glastonbury, today's. They have uh, Port au Prince, which I used yesterday. Lo or the day before, can't remember. Loved it, loved it. And then they also have Varin, which is released in the mutton tallow formula. It is a seasonal, so I hear it will be back in the spring. Right now we're in the uh, late fall, early winter. Uh, and so those are the, the mutton tallow soaps, and I bought samples of them. I'm really glad I did um, because I really like the base. I want to see which one is my favorite. Maybe order a tub of it. And, and move on from there. All right, well, I think we're ready to go. Let me uh, show you one more thing. Uh, George is a viewer, and I've commented and talked with him a few times uh, in the video comments, and he sent me a cap. And he said that uh, this uh, fits the old spice mugs and here is mine, and as you can see, it overlaps just a little bit. And so what I think he probably has, there's another size that's a little lower and probably a little wider. And the uh, and this probably fits that one exactly. But I'm going to keep this guy around. Uh, he told me this was the, uh, he told me what this was too. You can go to the grocery store, look in the cookie aisle. Those little cups of cookies, mini Chips Ahoy's um, are one of the uh, kinds and for a buck. I got a cover for my uh, for my mug because I don't want this fine accoutrements, Santal Absolute, wonderful scent. I don't want that scent to fade, and so now I can put this guy on there. But I, I got a feeling it fits exactly the uh, the other kind of Old Spice mug. Uh, I prefer this kind because the the muted uh, illustrations just kind of have a more vintage vibe to me. A lot of the other the other shape that's a little squattier uh, is more of a yellow color as well, and it's the the coloring is more much more distinctive. And to me, it feels like it could be a, a current you know current day uh, type item. And so I actually like uh, the one that looks a little older. And so now I can put this up where I usually keep it, and it will be the scent will be. Uh, protected so very cool George thanks for the tip that uh, cap may not be an exact match but it is going to cover that mug and keep that nice and fresh ish for me thanks George all right let me get my face wet I think I shaved last night and so we're looking at maybe 24 hours worth of growth uh, yeah, I think so. And so now we will uh, 
start working on this lather. As usual, I am going to, uh, hey, and just, um, if you're curious, 17 grams of water is what this particular brush stored, I believe, uh, I can't remember the figures, it's been a few days with the other ones that I measured, measured, measured some badger brushes and uh, the Sterling Finest bulb, 26 millimeter, held eight, roughly eight and a half teaspoons of water. This one I didn't hold nearly as much. You can feel the uh, the density of this brush. You can uh, because the the bristles are not flexing too much, and you can feel the scrubbiness of it. You can feel the backbone, and it pretty because of that backbone, it pretty much instantly just shreds the the soap that has been pressed into the bottom, picking it up and working it into the lather pretty quickly. Nice, yeah. Oak moss, lichen, frankincense. I definitely get the patchouli, probably the frankincense. It's a nice blend because it's a little hard I think I pick up the lavender too and I am kind of opposed to lavender if it's a really strong player but that's not the case here and when I say opposed I mean it's just not my thing opposed is a little bit of a strong word there all right so let's go ahead and start out with one and a half teaspoons of water So just want to get some more uses. This is the 18th use now of this bore brush. I've got about seven bores that I'm using in turn, in sequence. One use of each one and then starting the list over again and using again. And so we're all, we're starting the 18th use now. I've done a couple and this is the next one kind of that I chose in line. Lather looks terrific creamy, got a sheen to it, just a beautiful lather, cold water today, and so I'm, I'm kind of bringing in, I'm starting to call some of the hot water up in, so that my rinses can, can be lukewarm instead of, instead of chilly. But if you have uh, inflammation, why don't you try a cold water, especially in the winter here, huh? Try cold water. It's, a lot of times it can help to diminish that inflammation, reduce it, give you a more comfortable shave. Plenty of lather. That quarter teaspoon working well. Look, we've got a Bristle. I'm not worried about bristle loss until maybe 50th or 60th use. And we're far from that. So we've put two teaspoons of water in it. Let's go ahead and put another half and then we'll kind of test it out a little bit. So this brush, like I said, has been reluctant to uh, have the tips split. It's been reluctant to get soft and comfy like the other brushes I have in my 
rotation here in this borathon, so called. I've got uh, a zenith and samogs. I've got about four or five samogs in the list. And uh, the zenith and the samogs have been, gotten the, the most comfy the quickest in just a few uses. And all these pretty much started out as new brushes. The uh, Omega that I have, uh, 10098, uh, Pro 98 is what I think it can be called. And this brush here have been reluctant. Uh, this is no longer prickly and uh, kind of harsh, but if I was using a razor that was especially aggressive that might leave my skin a little tender, I might not use this brush uh, because it can kind of work away at your skin and might aggravate tender skin. Well, I'll tell you what, this lather is just gorgeous. Now look right there, you know, that might be a hair from a lot of times it, let's just see. Yep, I don't think lather's going to stand up like that. <laughs> There's a bristle inside of the uh, lather. So if we pull all that soap down to the bottom and then kind of lift it up, we can look at how the peaks stretch. Look at it's actually kind of firm, the wall there that's made in the bowl. Um, then we can also pull it up. Now like there's a wet spot right there. That means I need to work that a little bit more. I'll be right back. All right, I, my throat was kind of getting a little dry. I wonder if that's just the winter weather. So I got a cup of water handy. Let's feel now the lather. Oh, nice and slick. Man, this stuff is so good. Not a little bit of cushion, yeah. Not such good lather like this. I just. I feel like I don't want to waste it, put it on my skin and kind of let it work away at a few of the, the oils there. I think I will put in another half teaspoon. So now we've got three teaspoons in the, in the lather. This is a short handle brush. And so your fingertips are likely, if you generate this much lather, to kind of get a little messy. The handle can get just a little bit slippery, but uh, you can just rinse it off. Kind of turn it upside down and kind of rinse it off under the faucet there. and You'll be back working in no time. It's a larger uh, handle than it seems like online. Man, this, and yeah, look at this guy right here. That's what I'm talking about right there. That is some slick lather. Now, this may not be super creamy and kind of luxurious, but it's guaranteed to be super slick, I tell you that. This uh, sheep tallow base can, can go either way. You can, you can mix it a little drier and end up with just a creamy feel that just butters smooth, takes good care of your, your face feels good afterwards. It's kind of a hidden gem, really. I, I just learned about it recently, even though I've been a Sterling fan for a, a long time. So, how do I like this scent? I like it pretty well. Yeah. I mean, it's not overwhelming in terms of like a the patchouli, you know, that they didn't overpower the, the, the profile with it. And so... Uh, you know, it's not going to drown you or be too dominant. So I think I like this scent. Now that we've got everything mixed up, get my face wet one more time. But not the goatee. Let's see how this brush feels. Yeah. Very kind of very scrubby. 
not really soft quite yet, you know. It might take another 20 uses. I mean, it really might take another 50 uses. You just never know. And the thing about bores is that you don't know when it's going to, you don't know what it's going to feel like unless you've already been there. And so you don't know, like this particular feel, this could be what it's like for the, the rest of the time. Probably not. But uh, yeah, now look right here. See the shapes that we're looking at? The little kind of uh, arcs right there. We're, uh, I don't think we're at the creamiest phase here. So I'm thinking it needs a little bit more water. So let us add some more water to the to the brush, and then I kind of let it drip from the any overflow from the brush went into the lather bowl here. I've already got lather on my face. Man, that lather looks great. There we go. A little creamier now. A little slicker and wetter and all those good words. scent yeah it's still it's not very dominant it's not in your face it's not aggressive it's there it's available I'm picking out a little bit of the vetiver it's really a nice combo uh, if a I think a person who uh, kind of experience that time frame and, and loves the some of the scent notes that I mentioned, you know, the incense type notes. I think they're going to be able to enjoy this soap because it will it will uh, remind and, and kind of lead them in those directions. But a uh, and I've I've had some other soaps that are, are in this genre that were just so full of it, so in your face about it that you really had to like that a lot. To enjoy the soap and this one's different um, I'm, I'm not from that time period I wasn't old enough to do all that stuff and uh, and so but I am still enjoying this as a scent uh, in general it's a nice blend in my opinion all right so this is the uh, Mutton tallow, Glastonbury, providing the slickness for the Gillette New Raised Flat Bottom. I like the way this razor holds the blade really close to the, the edge. not say that this is an aggressive razor. I think I've said this many times on my channel here, but just because a razor is open comb does not mean that it's aggressive. I would say this is kind of medium in aggression. If I wanted to, especially with my skin, if I went a, the wrong direction, I could cause a problem and maybe stir up some rash or something but this is much nicer it feels much more certain and stable than the Rex Ambassador I've been using lately and this is a, it's more more blade feel than that but I guess it's just the way it's holding the blade uh, I don't feel like I'm stirring up irritation like I felt at risk with with the Ambassador so this razor did not have a problem taking down uh, the first pass of stubble at all as you would kind of expect. And we charge up and load up the brush with some 
lather. Now you can just do this painting motions. Just kind of spread the lather around because you've already done scrubbing with the first pass. Now I like to kind of feel the brush, work it, and so I will sometimes do scrubbing on the second and third pass, but it's not necessary. All right, there we go. All right, second pass. Should be nice, pretty smooth. It's a nice thing about the uh, razors like this that just have such a good grip on the blade. They, they grip it right up to the, close to the edge. And so you may get some blade feel. I'm getting a lot more slickness now than I did the first pass. Oh, and so we are evaluating this particular blade in this razor and I'd say it's doing very well. I may be able to find a blade that you know cuts more smoothly with less feel you know but this one's doing very well. I'm really happy with the pairing here. Also what's uh, the weight of the handle can make a real difference in the feel because the the inertia will cause especially on that first pass the razor not to be held back by uh, the weight. If it's really light, then you kind of have to sometimes pull the razor through the hairs. If you've got a heavy razor, then the inertia will just have it cut right through the hairs, kind of in a smooth, even motion without too much effort on your part. Regardless of the weight of the handle, always try to be have as light a touch as possible. Only contact the skin with enough pressure to hold the razor on your skin and try not to go any more than that is my personal advice all right so let's put on that third pass kind of shoving the brush down into it to to push the razor into the, uh, to push the lather to the interior part of the brush Now switch to painting. Plenty of leather here to do the job. It just, it feels terrific. I mean, look at that. Very few little tiny bubbles. There's none of those micro bubbles that you see in some other lathers. It's just a superior soap base that I don't think enough people know about. And you get almost six ounces of this magical stuff for I think $13, between $13 and $14, and that is nuts. All right. Cross grain on the face again. Watching my handle angle, listening for the cutting, feeling for the cutting as well to kind of try to get the last bits of stubble. Can inflate the cheeks to help. Uh, also pushing your um, the shoulder on the same side as you're working with back. Kind of puts a little bit of uh, stretch, a natural stretch on your neck there and your cheeks. Sometimes that's a big help. It's a little hard to do it if you are shaving this side and your hand and the razor is on there. So you could switch if you wanted to do that. But I get a good shave over here. I mean, except for my little trouble spot right there. I get a good shave over here anyway, so I don't worry about trying to work it to death. Now right here, do a little bit of extra work and we'll see. Looks like I do need to do a touch up pass right there. So I will rinse my razor as usual, and then a little half rinse now. The 
you just feel how slick the the lather is it's it's on your face and it it's a great feeling and so now water out of goatee important and then we can lay down just a little micro layer there nothing big and now I'm gonna just pull the skin over just a little bit tighten it up come from the bottom this time I, I like to do this buffing operation because then when I get up right here is where it starts to get kind of against the grain and then it's easy to know when to stop. I think we are good. Yeah, that's a reasonable. Not awesome, but pretty, pretty reasonable. Final rinse. Now that I have kind of been around it for a little bit, I I put my nose into the bowl and it's different now. I definitely pick up the oak moss, uh, an almost powdery kind of smell, and the lavender. The frankincense is backed off a little bit. So it looks like there are uh, parts of these, the different scents, and this is the way scents go. Uh, there are more volatile, the top notes that uh, that will you'll get right away at first, but then they will uh, use themselves up, and they won't be a part of the scent anymore. And then you'll get the the middle notes, and then the base notes last the longest because they're the most stable. And so it looks like that uh, kind of patchouli uh, type scent has has really backed off a little bit. Maybe some of the lavender. And I think the vetiver is doing a nice job of working with the other ingredients, the oak moss and the lavender, keeping it from being feminine totally, in my opinion. Not bad. And I think I even get the lichen. Interesting. I don't know necessarily if I am interested in getting a whole puck of this one because I know that I definitely like the Port-au-Prince a lot. It's a vetiver with a tweak of lemongrass with it. Turns out I really enjoyed it uh, yesterday when I used it. Uh, and then also Scott's Pine Sheep is a, a kind of a woody without being too piney. It's not pine saw at all. Uh, it's not that pine cleaner type smell. It's, it's different and nice. And so I think I like both of those better than this particular one. Though I'll keep this uh, sample around, whip it out every once in a while. You never know. Sometimes you have a little mm, craving for certain things or a, a, uh, your, uh, you'll uh, gravitate towards something for a good while. You, when it may be in the beginning, it didn't really impress you. So things do change. Three and a half teaspoons of water. And I believe I got a really, really nice lather. I'm really happy with the consistency. Can I say really more times than that? This is a real, <laughs> really, look at that. That is a wet lather, but it's not too wet. It uh, wasn't like, it wasn't uh, uh, knocking off my brush. Look at that. That's brilliant. Brilliant. And so it's, uh, um, it wasn't dripping off my face. It wasn't falling off my brush. <clears throat> As I did these side to side motions, it wasn't chunks weren't flying off. I love this soap base. And that is just, look at that, that is wonderful. I like my lathers really wet, really hydrated. The slickness um, on the first pass, it was a little slower, uh, probably because of all the hair. But I'm guessing it cut 80 to 90 percent off that first pass, and after that, the slickness, the glide of the razor was terrific. My face feels great after it, uh, so I like this sheep base, the mutton tallow base from Sterling. I am a big fan, and uh, so this was with a little bit more than a quarter teaspoon and the three and a half uh, teaspoons of water, 
And so I could definitely back off, use a little bit less than a quarter teaspoon, and then not quite have as much left over. Man, what a great lather. That's terrific. The uh, raised flat bottom, the new, the new RFB, um, worked really well. And uh, I think it looks pretty nice with this handle, I believe. Uh, I don't know if I'll keep it there permanently, but it uh, looks really nice. And the weight just really slices through. Uh, nice momentum, a smooth shave. I used an aluminum razor once, and that's what let me, that's what alerted me to what the difference in weight can do. I definitely found myself having to move the razor myself uh, when I came up to a patch of hair. I would uh, I would definitely feel a little bit of the hesitation and and pulling it through the hair. Whereas with the the heavier razors, it just the inertia just pushes right on through without too much effort. So here's what this guy looks like after a, a towel strop. And as you can see, he's not opening up too much. Nice density in there. Lots of bristles. And that's a good thing with this brush. And uh, it was, it is a, it's getting to be more enjoyable to use, though it's not soft. You do get the scrub, but, uh, but you, um, it's not a problem like it used in the beginning. It was kind of a little too scrubby but that has backed off enough to be enjoyable now uh, and almost a, a spa therapeutic kind of scrub. You know, that uncomfortableness, but then it, it feels good anyway, that kind of thing. Um, so I am looking forward to see what happens uh, as this guy matures, as I keep using it, and as we see the, the tips get to split because um, if a knot is too floppy and it's got these great soft tips, then it's flopping over, not allowing you to enjoy those tips. But if we've got this kind of backbone and then these super soft tips uh, that may come in at 100 uses, who knows, um, then that may be the best thing. And who knows, I may like this guy more than some of the softer ones that I'm enjoying right now. Who knows? Now, one thing I'll say, and it's several minutes now, I went and did an internet search about Glastonbury, uh, and sure enough, there's a uh, there was a music festival started in 1970, uh, the day after Jimi Hendrix died, and then it uh, was again in '71. Uh, it just had a few acts, is what the website I found said, and uh, but it, it's just grown apparently. And uh, the recent 2017, there was a 2019 event apparently, but I looked at 2017, tons of acts and all kinds of acts as well. Uh, and so apparently it's a very ongoing, very popular uh, music festival that I had no clue about. So I got a little educated today. Uh, UK Music Festival, Glastonbury Fair is what it was called for quite a while. Uh, and so... Um, this is not an overtly heavy weed type scent. And so if you just like a little bit of incense or uh, something in that direction, then this isn't going to alienate you with its uh, distinctive weedness to it. It'll have hints of that. And so I, I think I like it. Um, and I think I, it uh, works nicely in the, uh, the fall right now. It's nice and kind of warm, uh, you know, but it's so, it is also uh, not super heavy. So I think it could be, it'd be fine year round, definitely. But what I'm really surprised to report is the, the feel of my skin. I haven't put on any kind of post-shave product and my skin feels great. I, I, there's not any kind of tightening or drying sensation at all. And so it's very true what Sterling was saying uh, with their intentions on this soap to, to treat your skin really well. Uh, and you'll see it in my soap base notes in the description, that some of the things they said about this. I do see some length and some hairs right here. So it, uh, this particular blade combo with the RFB, you know, did not do a great job at uh, right there I can't go against the grain it gives me irritation so I just have to settle with what cross grain from this way and then a cross grain from this way will do for me 
All right, really happy with the RFB. Felt good during the use. And it's really funny because the, the ambassador gave me kind of the same result. Nice on the cheeks. Oh, not this nice. This is great. Um, uh, nice on the cheeks, but uh, it still left some hairs, you know, like this did. But this one did it much more comfortably. The, uh, the new RFB, uh, raised flat bottom, uh, did it more comfortably. And, um, and so that's why I, uh, I got the same result, but I like the way I got it a lot better with this razor. So this one's staying around, that's for sure. Really happy with the, uh, with the cut. So this is a pretty good blade with it. Looking forward to trying more as things go, as things go on. I showed you how much water we used, uh, three and a half teaspoons. I'm guessing we probably had... I bet I could make three more passes out of the lather that I had left over. So that's quite a lot of lather. And um, I think we're I think we're good. So let's uh, uh, let's figure out what post shave to throw on. Then I'll give you a razor tour of the new RFB. Now the I ran into somebody who said that the reason sandalwood was kind of expensive is because its resources were really tapped out in the hippie generation. I wonder how true that is. And so I've got this Perrazzo Red. Now the Perrazzo line of soaps and creams are kind of okay. Uh, especially, I think they're really overpriced if you're paying Amazon prices for them. $12, $14 for a tub of that soap. It's To me, it's overpriced for the performance that you get. If you go to TJ Maxx or Marshalls or one of those discount places, sometimes you can find it at $5 each. I think that's kind of a fair price for what you're getting. But this aftershave, I think, is, is actually worth it if, if you like the scent. And so it's sandalwood, and so I think that should work really nicely with the uh, Glastonbury theme and hopefully with the scent profile. It's not a lot of skin food in this particular aftershave. It does have uh, shea oil. But other than that, it's alcohol and fragrance. And uh, I like it a lot. My wife doesn't. So I use it when she's, when she's away or I'm away. All right. Nice. Yeah, I think it's working really nicely. Uh, it's definitely overwhelmed the Glastonbury. And my skin's fine. I did feel... Man, what a great soap base. That sheep. That sheep tallow. Alright, guys. Ah, now it's time for the tour. Alright, let me get the razor blade out of here. And I'll show you. So, this, the rest of the video is going to be the tour. <clears throat> really happy with today's shave, if you didn't know already. Thank you so much for watching, uh, and if you are uh, if you don't need a tour of this particular razor, it was uh, nice being with you. All right, so I put the thin handle, this is the tech handle, put it back on. It is kind of hollow, kind of from, uh, probably from here on down to here. Some people have put weights inside of it, um, like pulled this part out and then put some weights inside of the, the other larger tech handles to give it a little bit more balance because it is definitely tech, uh, head heavy, head focused. Um, yeah, the uh, balance point is actually uh, a little more forward than this, you know, shoulder line right here. It's a little more like three millimeters toward the head with that. So it's, that's definitely a head focused, head focused balance. Very ni nice and grippy. You can see the knurling there on the handle. So you're, you're generally not going to drop this guy uh, if you're being careful at all. So here's the uh, side view. The side of the top cap does come down a little bit more than it, as you can see when we open it up there. It's got more of a gap. But that's because that's that corner post I, I pointed out earlier. And of course we've got the teeth 
and in many cases I'm really glad that this one doesn't have it but in many cases these corner teeth will be bent because it, you know it got dropped And the usual advice is don't try to bend them back yourself. A lot of times it'll cause a breakage or it just won't work right. And in many cases, a slightly bent tooth is not going to impact the shave at all. So a lot of times, just leave it be. All right, so there we have the bottom plate. The bottom of the handle is closed there. So the thin tech handle, small little guy. And so here's the uh, bottom. Wait, oh, okay, I see. So along the bottom, it's right side up, but on the top part, it's upside down. Oh, this one's got a serial number, 363892. Now that is, uh, now that's a patent number, I believe. And so that will help you get a date range if you need one. Sometimes it's a big range and it's not all that helpful. In some cases, I haven't looked this one up yet. Talks about the British patent and all that. So I thought it was suitable to have a Glastonbury soap with a British razor head and so now we'll take this guy apart and so we have that trough that those blade alignment rails fit in pretty straightforward and you can see the bottom this this is how close the the, ba the blade was supported uh, from the bottom and that wasn't super close and so it must have just had a better grip because of a good a good design with the top cap other razors definitely grip it a little closer to the edge and have a firmer feel but this had a really nice firm feel I thought it gripped it closer to the edge on the bottom but it it didn't so I don't reckon there's much more to show you. It's kind of a standard top cap. This might even be just the same as some other tech heads, things like that. Rails and then the four corners to help keep alignment perfect. Smooth top cap there. So there we go. Probably brass on the inside and it's been plated. Could be rhodium. That was a popular one back then. So that's the tour. All right. Well, hey, this is Sugar Daddy Shaves and uh, thanks so, so much for watching. Uh, it's been a pleasure bringing all this info to you. And uh, I hope there was something here that helped you out. You take care. Good night.